Okay, now we're going to look at how to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is a direct result of the completeness square method. Someone took the completeness square method and used it to solve the quadratic, the general form of the quadratic equation. With the A's, the B's, and the C's, they didn't take it out, they didn't put any numbers in there. They went through each step with A's, B's, and C's, and the result was the quadratic formula. And so this is what they got says x equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Does that look like gibberish? So it might look like gibberish to you. However, it is important to know because it is an easier way of solving or easier method for solving the quadratic equation. Um, so one of the things I like to do is make my students actually sing a song to the quadratic formula to help them remember it, to get it in their mind and their spirit. And I do that because music is something that can enter your spirit without your permission. So for instance, have you ever found yourself singing lyrics to a song that you never sat down and studied? Um, or I could probably start singing some jingles and you could probably finish them. Like I could say, nationwide is... Hopefully you said on your side. That's the nationwide jingle. Or what about this one? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Hopefully you said I'm loving it. That's the McDonald's jingle. Or you could say, oh, oh, oh. Hopefully you said O'Reilly. That's the O'Reilly Auto O'Reilly Auto Parts jingle. Um, so music can actually enter your spirit without your permission. So I like to make my students sing a song. It really, really helps them learn this formula and it goes to the pop goes the weasel tune i'm gonna sing it for you now i don't have the best voice singing voice um actually people tell me i sound like beyonce but when i talk not when i sing uh so if i sound like her when i sung i would probably not be teaching math but anywho i'm gonna sing the song so i'm just warning you i don't have the best singing voice but i'm gonna sing it anyway and it goes something like this x equal negative b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac all over 2a again it goes to the pop goes the weasel tune i don't know if you remember the ice cream truck used to come through the neighborhood or still do come through the neighborhood playing a dun 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 so again i'm gonna sing it again i'm gonna sing it one more time and then i'm gonna get you to sing it with me all right here we go x equal negative b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac all over 2a all right let's do it one more time i want you to sing it with me this time here we go five six seven eight x equal negative b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac all over 2a okay so again if you can sing it sing it over and over It'll help you remember it. Trust me, it will. So in our first example, we're going to use the quadratic formula to solve x squared minus 3x minus 7 equals 0. Um, once you know the formula, the rest is just plugging in and simplifying. So the biggest part is knowing the formula. And so that's why I like to sing it. And because I cannot write as fast as I can sing, I have to actually chop and screw the song. So I live in Houston, Texas, home of the chop and screw. If y'all know what that is, Google it. It's where they slow your music down and it sounds dragging. It might sound a little deeper. The voice of the singer might sound a little deeper than what it sounds in, in real time. Um, so I like to chop and screw my quadratic formula so that I can actually write and sing it at the same time. So you have to first identify your A, your B, and your C. So A in this case is one. That's the number in front of the square term. B is negative 3, that's the number in front of the X term, and then C, which is your constant term, is negative 7. Once you have your A, B, and C, the rest is just plugging in and simplifying. So again, we are going to plug it into the quadratic formula, and I am going to sing the song, but I'm going to chop it and screw it and plug it in that way. Really, I'm just going to screw it because I'm going to slow it down. So remember, it was X equal negative B plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I'm going to x equal negative b plus or minus square root 
b squared minus 4ac c all over 2a. I screwed it and I still ended up writing fast. But let's make sure we got everything plugged in right. We got b here, we have b here, a here, and c here, and then the rest is just a matter of simplifying. So we get x equal a negative and a negative becomes a positive. Three, negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 7 is a positive 28. 2 times 1 is 2. So we get x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 37 all over 2. And so you can actually break that up. That's x equal to 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 37 over 2. 37 is a prime, so it cannot be broken up any further. So that's completely simplified. 3 half plus or minus the square root of 37 over 2. And you can actually break that up. That's x equal to 3 half plus the square root of 37 over 2, and x equal to 3 half minus the square root of 37 over 2. So again, it just depends on what platform you're using for your homework, whether you have to enter it in like this, or separated and entered as two separate answers. But they're both the same and they're both sufficient. Um, and so that's solving using the quadratic formula. Let's try another one. Okay, example two, we're gonna solve x times x minus six equal three. Now this is a quadratic equation. It doesn't look like one, but we can make it look, one, look like one. So first we wanna distribute this x. We're gonna multiply x times x, which is x squared, and x times six, which is minus six x. And that equals 3. And now you want to get 0 on one side. So move the 3 over. Subtract 3. And even though I'm writing this underneath the 6x, I cannot combine it with the 6x. Because 6 has an x on it and 3 don't have an x on it. So this becomes x squared minus 6x minus 3 equal to 0. And so now it looks like, in, or now it's in the form of a quadratic equation. So you want to identify your a, which is 1 your b, which is negative six, and your c, which is negative three. Once you have your a, b, and c, the rest is just plugging it into the formula. And again, I'm gonna screw my song so I can slow it down and plug in the a, b, and the c. So here we go. x equal negative b plus or minus square root b square minus four a, a, c all over 2a. So I have everything plugged in. Now it's just simplifying. So two negatives here make a positive. Negative 6 squared is 36. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times a negative 3 is a positive 12. All over 2. So 36 and 12 underneath the square root becomes 48. So now the question is, can you rewrite the square root of 48? Um, can it be simplified? Can 48 or do 48 have a product of a perfect square inside of it? So if you think about it, 48 is, although it is 4 times 12, there's a bigger perfect square in there, 16. It's also 16 times 3. So this is the same as the square root of 16 times 3, which is the square root of 16 times the square root of 3 which is four square roots of three. So the square root of 48 is four square roots of three. So you can rewrite this as six plus or minus four square roots of three all over two, which can be broken up if you separate the fraction. That's six over two plus or minus four over two, four square roots of three over two. Six over two is three. 4 over 2 is 2. And so you get your final answer as 3 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. And again, it's two separate answers, so if you need to break it up, that's x equal 3 plus 2 square root of 3, and x equal to 3 minus 2 square root of 3. So it's either that answer or those two broken up. They're the same. So this is how you do it you plug in the a to b and the c and the rest is simplifying okay now you take a minute pause the video and you try this one see if you can solve this equation so try it and see if you get it right
Okay, so you should have first distributed the m. When you distribute the m here, you get m squared plus 10m equal negative 34. You need to get zero on one side, so add 34 to both sides. And so you get m squared plus 10m plus 34 equal to zero. So now identify your A, your B, and your C. A is one, B is 10, and C is 34. And so now you wanna plug them into the formula. So in this case, it's not X, it's M. So you have M equal negative B plus or minus square root B square minus four AC all over 2a. Alrighty. Then simplify. So 10 squared is 100. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 34 is 136. 2 times 1 is 2. So simplify underneath the root. 100 minus 136 is negative 36 all over 2. Well, anytime you have a negative underneath the root, it becomes an i. And then the square root of 36 we know is 6. So you get m equal to negative 10 plus or minus 6i over 2, which breaks apart. That's m equal negative 10 over 2 plus or minus 6i over 2, which is negative 5 plus or minus 3i. So you get those two answers, negative 5 plus 3i and negative 5 minus 3i. Is that what you got? Hopefully that's what you got. If not, go back through, see if you can catch your mistake or your error um, because once you plug in, sometimes you may plug in the wrong let, uh, numbers for the letters as well. So make sure you plug in 1 for A, 10 for B, and 34 for C. So go back through it and make sure you can get to this answer in the end. All right. If you have any questions, make sure you comment below. Also, make sure you subscribe. Um, more to come. And until the next time, I will see you again.